Uh, finally tonight, Olivia Newton-John shared her favorite prayer on a podcast last year. An actress known for her role as Sandy in the movie musical Grease said that she prayed the Lord's Prayer daily. Olivia Newton-John passed away on Monday at the age of 73. And joining us now to discuss is Kelsey Wicks, Interim Executive Director for Catholic News Agency. Kelsey Wack, welcome back. Always so good to be with you. Um, let's talk Thank more you, about Casey. Olivia Newton-John. She was, as you know, she was an incredible entertainer, such a big talent and loved by so many. But what about her faith? What can you tell us about that? Here's what I love about this story, Tracy, is not only was she an icon, she was also just a woman in need of grace and God's assistance. And um, during a difficult time in her pregnancy, she thought that she might lose her daughter in utero. And so she, um, you know, did one of those bargains that we've all done with God. And, um, and she promised that if her daughter could be kept safe, she would pray the Lord's Prayer every night, um, uh, a promise that she revealed last year that she had kept. Wow, that is amazing, something that a lot of us didn't know, uh, and so beautiful, too. Um, Kelsey, another thing I want to talk about, uh, we reported this earlier, a proposed law in Spain could destroy the world's largest cross. What more do you know about this uh, and about what Spain's government plans to do to the Basilica of the Holy Cross? Yeah, this is a really interesting story, Tracy. Thank you for bringing it to the attention of your audience. The government of Spain has recently passed a new law aimed at the removal of Francoist symbols. Now, this involves a little bit of a, of a history lesson about the Spanish Civil War and the dictator Francisco Franco. Um, one of the background pieces that's really instrumental to understanding this is that seven to 8,000 priests and 50 bishops in a span of five years were killed um, by the, the Republican movement um, that, that sparked the Spanish Civil War and then ultimately would see the rise of the dictator Franco. Um, so the, the Republican movement, idolized by Ernest Hemingway and other figures in America, <clears throat> was actually funded by the Soviet Union. It was a sort of a brutal combination of, of communists and an anarchists. And um, this, this long protracted um, uh, war in, in Spain, it, it, about three years um, that it took to resolve, finally read to the, led to the rise of Franco. And he, at the end of the war, decided that um, there needed to be a, a, a place of healing for the country. And so he, he actually commissioned the building of this basilica and, um, and this cross. And it was actually the, the place of, of the fallen, the Valley of the Fallen is what it's known as. And it was a, it was a resting place for, for both victims and um, persecutors on both sides of, of the, the Spanish Civil War. So this um, new law that is aimed to remove um, the, the cross is, is just an incredible assault on um, the healing and the unity within Spain. Um, not only would it involve the removal of the cross, but it also would involve the closure of the Benedictine Abbey and the desacralization of the church. It would turn the church, um, the Basilica of the Holy Cross, into a museum of, of Francoist horrors. Uh, something else, Kelsey, I want to talk about that I know CNA has been reporting on. Um, in the United Kingdom, 12-year-old Archie Battersby was recently taken off of life support. And this was despite his family's wishes, as you know. What more can you tell us about this heartbreaking situation? Uh, I know, unfortunately, uh, this has happened to other parents before in the UK. Yes. Um, the death of Arch Archie Battersby is, is a great tragedy. Um, it prompted his mother Holly Dance to remark that, again, our country has failed a 12-year-old child. And, you know, it harkens back to the, to the chase of Charlie Gard in um, 2017. Uh, but it raises a lot of questions about what constitutes death, what constitutes parental rights, um, what constitutes an ethical decision in this. Uh, the Anscombe Bioethics Center actually said it was extraordinary that the, um, the balance of, of probability that he might be alive um, was somehow elevated above the determination beyond a reasonable doubt that he was he was dead. Now, as Catholics, we know that the death is actually the separation of the soul from the body. We don't necessarily subscribe to this very secular understanding of, of brain death um, that is what the um, Royal London Hospital relied upon in removing him from his ventilator. Well, Kelsey, we're going to leave it right there. Thank you so much for coming on today. We really appreciate it.
Thank you.